Whom the Son hath set free, he is free indeed. There is another scripture that talks about and says, Having been set free from the bondage of sin, I will be brought, I will not be brought under the subjection of any. Meaning that we don't yield our members to sin once we have been forgiven, nor do we bring ourselves under bondage or subject to the law once we have been given grace. We have been set free from the guilt of the law. And we've been brought into relationship with Jesus. One of the saddest, I think most depressing things that I could imagine any Christian having to do would be to go out on Christmas and fight for the right to celebrate Christmas. Christmas isn't about fighting. It isn't about making a stand or taking a cause and lifting up a banner and declaring, oh, we're Christians, oh, we have a right to fight for our privilege. No, as a matter of fact, if you read the text of when Jesus was born, everything was done, quite frankly, on the quiet side. The only people that saw the angels that had filled the sky, so to speak, with the good news was shepherds. So you see, if it so be that the greatest message in the world had come in such quiet humility and such humble means, then it really isn't mandatory that you go out and demonstrate who you are by making some kind of action or reaction from others? I don't think so. You see, a guilt-free Christmas is one where you don't feel like you have to do something because someone is pressuring you into it. Your conscience is clear. Your heart is full of love. Your joy is made manifest. Your peace passes all understanding. There isn't any of the world in its ways that interests you. As a matter of fact, if you look at the three wise men, I think that's what you ought to be this Christmas season. Like wise men who are seeking the Lord. Where is he to be found? Where can we go to meet him? Not where can we bring him to meet people? You see, we don't have to demonstrate the fact we're Christians. It's obvious. Who else would love their enemies? Who else would pray for those who despitefully use, use them and abuse them? Who else would stand up for love and joy and peace in a season when everyone wants to hate? Who else would say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, let me bless his holy name. God bless you, Mr. President. God bless you, members of Congress. God bless us all, everyone, from Tiny Tim to the greatest of all, whether in sin or not. God bless you in a season that God has given us this reason to bless, to be an encouragement, to be a light that leads the way for wise men today to go and find Jesus in a humble means, in a stable far away, not in the midst of a crowd and a congregation who makes these great cantatas and pageants and reaching out in a marvelous, magnificent way for millions to come and say, oh yes, I declare today that I'm a Christian, and then tomorrow I'll declare, no, I'm not. But rather, let's go see the sight that we've been told about from the angels who have declared on high that something is happening in Bethlehem. And they went to see what it was, because they had heard from the angels declaring it. God's timing for those shepherds was perfect. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Doesn't sound like your normal gospel message. 
doesn't sound like the reason for the season that we have to go out and make sure that everyone knows that Jesus died, was born, and raised, and came, and crucified, and stripes, and healed, and this, and that, and the other thing. I think it was just one thing. A babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on his earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Don't make Christmas the issue. Don't make Christianity a farcity. Don't make it something it's not. Be about peace on earth, God's will toward men. You don't have to declare anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be anything. Guess what? It's all been done. There is no one anywhere in the world, in the entire world, that doesn't know what Christmas is. Please, don't watch some television show. Don't go to some internet site and pretend that you have to supposedly contend for some kind of, oh, what the, resolve to be very religious, especially now. Oh my God, it's Christmas. No, it's peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Take what God declared at the time of birth and said, do this and find what it is that God had in mind for the day that Jesus was born. Your guilt is what motivates you most of the time. Your conscience causing you to create some kind of environment where you feel like you got to do what you got to do because you got to tell them because they're heading for hell and my God, they're going to die No. God is in control. He has always been in control. There is no reason for this season for you to make a great evangelistic crusade. You don't have to portray anything. They know who you are. Anyone who knows Jesus is obvious. Anyone who's around them, they know you're a Christian. You don't have to demonstrate it. You don't have to make some kind of, oh, we're not one of those, but we're one of these, and separate yourself as though it was an all one family of God, declaring that this is a great joy, a glad tidings, that we can't sing songs together and rejoice in all of it. The Rudolphs and the Red Deer, Red Nose Reindeers and the Frosties and the Grinches and the families and even those that are broken families, that we can't come together in some ways and just say, here, be fed, be filled, be blessed. Glad tidings of great joy. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Make that your motto for the season. Not Jesus is the reason. And it's not the reason. Jesus is not the reason for the season. God's will is the reason for the season, and it's defined in Luke. And if you want to know what the reason is without having to make it into some kind of religious observance, that you have to pretend and contend that you've got, oh, we got to make it the issue. <laughs> we've got to play Tarzan and swing from a vine, and somebody's going to come along and snip the line that you've been feeding everybody. It's not the reason for the season. He said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, all. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, the babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. It says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let's go, even though we got to go far away to Bethlehem, let's go see these things which is to come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste. And they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, saying, which was told them concerning this child. What was told them concerning this child? For unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Messiah, 
Christ the Lord. You don't have to be all about the get salvation message you've got planned. You don't have to be all about trying to save your unloved ones. You don't have to be all about, you know, trying to hide, you know, all these different things. You have to be you. You have to be free. You have to be glad. Rejoice in this time. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Huh. And laugh. And watch little children dance and sing. And watch Charlie Brown as he does his thing. And watch Lucy and Snoopy and the Grinch. Watch Frosty the Snowman. Watch Hallmark Hall of Fame movies and Lifetime as they present to you all the different stories to retell the same story. The one story that God gave and God brought. Don't you see? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? Can't you open your eyes around you? The whole world is infected with the reality of the story of Christmas. We all know what it is. We're all glad that it happened. Everyone can rejoice in this one thing. God gave us good tidings of great joy. What we do will be tomorrow. What we are is for today. And what we can do is celebrate. God bless you and go out and enjoy it the way you choose. It's not so important to know what they might win or lose. It's more important than what you be set free in the love that God has manifested in himself in the very tenderness that every man, woman, and child feels when they watch the birth of a child. That when that tender little bundle of baby is there, tell me you don't care. In such a humble, in such a meaningful way, God unites us on this day. And we can have the guilt-free Christmas if we do it His will and allow Everyone, shepherds, wise men, animals, cats and dogs too. Everyone, for this shall be to all people, everyone. Allow them the freedom to celebrate Christmas and be with them in joy. To just enjoy this year this time and this place, the fact that God is with us.